Yeah, hello, um, it's me again, Zulfan. So now for today, we're going to talk about linear programming. Um, I think you've seen this uh, more often now. Um, yeah, the content for today's presentation is about, uh, we'll talk about some, uh, an example, a refinery case, and then we'll try to solve the refinery case uh, with uh, graphical solutions, also with a simplex method. And then we'll discuss about uh, degenerate linear programming and sensitivity analysis and duality in linear programming. Linear programming is uh, the most widely used in chemical industries simply because um, we try to simplify things into linear forms and then so that we can we can have um, like a, a global optimum. Because last time we discussed that um, um, this uh, the constraints for if the constraints are linear, the objective functions are linear. Uh, all of them they make like a convex region where we can find um, global optimum solutions. Um, the the three basic steps in the formulating linear programming, which is identify the decision variables, uh, express the constraints as linear equalities or inequalities and then the, we write then the objective function as a linear function um, these are the typical example uh, we have like a, a re refinery and then we have crude one with a price of 24 dollar per barrel crude two uh, a cheaper one 15 dollar per barrel and then the, out of this refinery we can make gasoline kerosene fuel and uh, residues each has their own um, uh, prices if we put these different crudes into the refinery, we'll have a different product slates. For example, guess, uh, from crude one, from crude one, we'll have like eighty uh, volume to volume percent of, of gasoline, five percent kerosene, ten percent fuel oil, five percent residue, and then the the processing cost for this crude one is half a dollar per barrel. <coughs> And as you can see in crude 2, crude 2 is uh, slightly heavier than crude 1. It has um, half, about half of the gasoline produced, but more kerosene, much more uh, fuel oil, and also double the amount of residues. Uh, since they are more heavier, so we can expect that they have a more expensive processing cost. And then um, due to the uh, unit constraints, we can only produce maximum 24,000 barrels per day of gasoline. 2,000 barrels per day of kerosene and 6,000 barrels per day of fuel oil. So we're going to formulate these problems later on and then we'll see that this is indeed a, a linear programming. So another example is that uh, once you have like a two, uh, two plants, one's in Barcelona and the other one in Antwerp, and then we are going to send our products to Rotterdam, Frankfurt and Porto. Uh, so this table one, uh, gives like a distance from Barcelona to Rotterdam, so uh, we don't take this literally, so just like uh, examples. Um, the distance from Barcelona to Rotterdam, for example, is 250 kilometers away, Barcelona to Frankfurt, 170 kilometers away, and so on and so forth. So these are then the, um, uh, um, the distance between the markets and the uh, plants. So Rotterdam requires 325 tons of goods, Frankfurt 300, and then Porto 275. And then the Barcelona plant can make uh, 350 tons of goods. Antwerp can make uh, almost double of that uh, production. And um, if we going to, if we're going to transport the goods from Rotter Barcelona to Rotterdam and the other way around, uh, and and to other places, uh, to simplify the problem, we have like a transportation cost of a flat 10 dollar um, or euro per ton per kilometer. So the question is then, how many of goods can we uh, shall we transport from which plant to which market? Um, this is also uh, a linear programming. Uh, there is another example as well. So we have like um, two different factories, factory one, factory two, and then the, to customer one and customer two. And then the, the shipment cost from factory one to customer one is about $30. From factory one to uh, customer two, it's $25. So we have like a shipment cost, yeah? And then the um, uh, first customer, uh, first factory, sorry, first factory has uh, 400 tons of, of products, lubricants in this case, and factory two has 300 tons. 
and first customer requires 200 tons of, of goods and then the customer two requires 300 tons so the question is still the same uh, how many tons of lubricants or goods uh, shall we produce and send to which customer to minimize the uh, like a shipment, shipment cost in this case so these are three um, uh, typical and also simpler versions of um, uh, real life case studies so let's spell with again the refinery problems so we have this we have seen this uh, now we are trying to make the objective function which is then to maximize the profit um, so we define the variables for, for example in this case we have x1 as like a crude one consume x2 is then the crude to consume x3 is then the uh, gasoline x4 kerosene x5 fuel oil produced and in this case is then residual produce so these are the variables that we are going to define <coughs> um, the equations so we can make um, as we know that x3 is gasoline so x3 is gasoline is then equals to 0.4 x 0.8 x1 because x1 is then the crude oil one and then it can make 80 percent of gasoline and then 0.44 x2 yeah the same goes with the kerosene uh, 0.05 x1 plus 0.1 x2 equals to x4 kerosene fuel oil and residuals um, for the inequalities because we have um, we have this as the maximum productions so we go back that uh, maximum gasoline is 24,000 kerosene maximum 2,000 and fuel oil maximum of 6,000 and if we if we if we put this uh, there we we'll get we we'll get this so we had uh, 0.81 0.8 x1 plus 0.44 x2 less than or equal to 24,000 and so on and so forth of kerosene and fuel and uh, we know that um, all all these variables are bigger than or equal to zero um, so the objective function is in this case to maximize the profit so what is then the profit profit comes from income minus raw material cost and then minus processing cost so the income is then the whole uh, uh, sales of of the products so gasoline 36 uh, we can see it here so 36 of gasoline um, and then 24 of, of uh, kerosene 21 fuel oil and 10 residues so the material cost is about crude oil 1 and crude oil 2 with their corresponding prices and plus the processing cost so if we sum put all these three put these three questions uh, into the objective functions we get we get this Um, um, if we um, eliminate x3, x4, x5, and x6 based on this, so we know x3, x4, x5, and x6, uh, we know them in terms of x1 and x2, we get uh, the following uh, equations then. So if we then, um, uh, if you combine them all, so we have uh, maximizing uh, the profit, which is this equations. This comes from the, the bigger versions. This one. And then the, we have the whole constraints put together. And uh, we see the constraints from uh, gasoline, kerosene, fuel oil, and residues with limits of gasoline, fuel oils, and kerosene, and fuel oils. But if we can then the, put, this, put this into that and then we can have uh, reduced versions of the objective functions which is very easy to see 8.1 x1 plus 10.8 x2 and then with three constraint of uh, gasoline kerosene and fuel oil if you put them to a graph yeah, you can imagine that we have x1 is then the, on the x-axis x1 for the crude oil one and then x2 in the crude oil two and then the, um, uh, we have three constraints in terms of x1 x1 and x2 um, so we have constraint a which is then the gasoline 0.8 x1 plus 0.44 x2 less than or equal to 24,000 which is this blue line yeah so um, uh, this is then the uh, feasible region so this is not feasible region um, and the uh, constraint B, which is then the kerosene 0.05 x1 plus 0.1 x2 less than or equals to 2000. The orange one, so it's going to be in this direction. And 
and then constraint C, which is the fuel oil, the gray one, which is in these directions. And we know for sure that we're going to have like a positive of crude oil. So this is then the directions of X1. This is then the directions of X2. So we have um, from here, there, here, and there. Yeah, is our uh, feasible region. Yeah, if we uh, if we are now trying to if we see the uh, objective function, so eight point one x one eight plus ten point two eight x two, we can intuitively see that uh, if we want to maximize this, that means we have to maximize x one and then maximize x two, right? Because this is all plus. So uh, if we are moving from the point zero, if we, was, if we say that we want to maximize both x one and x two, we are for sure we are going to move in that direction. Yeah. Um, see, uh, we uh, so the further we are away from zero zero point, that means we are going to maximize the objective function as much as possible. So let's see if we um, if we uh, encounter this. Um, this, this point of A, point 0.1, which is x1 equals to 0, x2 is then about, um, yeah, about 15, 16 something, close to 17 uh, thousands. So we get um, uh, um, we put plug in these numbers into these objective functions, we get uh, 180,000 of, of the objective functions. And then if we plug in also this point 2 over here, so you can see how much is x1 and how much x2, we put that numbers in, we get this number, 256,500. And then point 3 over here is about um, 286,758. And point 4 over here, where x2 is 0, uh, it's 24. 243,000 of the year. So if we compare these numbers, F1, F2, F3, and F4, we can see that F3 becoming the, uh, is then the, the highest number. So we can say in this case, at this point, right, because this is then, I think you can see, this is then the furthest point from 0, 0. Uh, so this point becomes the uh, maximum or the objective functions, which, is corres which corresponds to X1, 26,000. 206 and then x2 is about uh, 6,896 barrels per day. So this is then the, 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 the profit. So now we can, we have, we have, we have solved this with the very simple uh, graphical solutions, but um, what happens if we have um, more than two variables, right? Because in these two variables, we can simply uh, draw it in a graphical solutions. If we have more than uh, two variables, we have to solve them in a, in a method called like simplex method. It's a different from the simplex with the, um, with the nail limit. So it's simplex is in the, as in the linear programming solutions. Um, the simplex method, this is this corresponds to the standard maximization problem. So anything that we have to maximize. Yeah. So it's a bit different from the. Uh, the uh, standard optimization problem where we have to minimize, but in this simplex method, the standard form of the simplex is about maximization problem. So we want to maximize things, just like what we have over here, we want to maximize this away from zero, zero. Um, and this, uh, the constraint is the same. The constraint is about less than or equal to. Uh, all of this is about less than and uh, equal to. So we have this many constraints, and in the end we have uh, like uh, non-negative uh, variables as the constraint. So the way to do it is that uh, if the problem is minimization instead of maximization, then we have to convert this z. We have to convert z into y, which is then minus z, which we can, which we then can uh, maximize y. And then we introduce slack variables and convert the inequalities into equality constraints. So we have this inequality. And we put the slack variable s and then we put this uh, equals to instead of less than or equal to. 
if we have the opposite sign like this one larger than or equal to and then we have to then change everything to uh, uh, less than or equal to by multiplying them with minus one and then once we have them in minus one then we have the select variables introduced as well you can see they're all minus signs and it's also minus signs and the select variable is always positive this is what we have to uh, remember and then the, once we have the maximization optimization and then we have the constraints all in the form of uh, equality constraints with the select variables and we then convert them into matrix of equations vector variables matrix of equations of the constants and vector variables of the x1 x2 x3 and so on and so forth and then the vector of the right hand side of the equations the b and um, number four, check if basic variables, basic variable means the variable that only appear in one equation, check if, them, if they are all positive. If not, then these variables do not make a feasible basic solution. And then we go to step six, which is this, to remove all negative coefficients on the right hand side. The right hand side. Um, so we... Um, if we um, assume that now we have like uh, all basic variables are all positive yeah we go to step five and we find a pivot column pivot column based on the most negative coefficient of the objective functions we will see that in a moment and then the objective function the most negative coefficient in the objective function and then we find the pivot row the smallest positive positive ratio the smallest positive ratio between the right hand side side, side numbers and the coefficients in the pivot column and then the intersection between the pivot column and pivot row is the pivot point and then make the pivot point into one and then apply gauss jordan elimination and then back to a if there is still um, if there is still negative coefficients in the uh, objective functions yeah this we have to remove oh until until so this is okay um if we go back so if 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 uh, if some of these variables some of these basic variables they are not positive that means we have to then find the pivot row instead of pivot column is in the above step number five so step number six we find the pivot row based on the most negative coefficients on the right hand side numbers and then find the pivot column based on the most negative coefficients in the pivot row so the intersection between them is then the pivot point and then make that pivot point to one, apply Gauss Jordan eliminations and then back to A until there's no negative coefficients. Simple example. So now we have um, take uh, x1 and x2 as the variables. So we have constrained, um, yeah, take this as constraint one. So x1 minus x2 less than or equals to one. So these are then the, um, the um, uh, feasible region of this constraint. And then we have another constraint of this, 3x1 plus 4x2 less than or equals to 12. This is then the, 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 the uh, feasible region. And we have another constraint, x1 plus x2, bigger than or equals to 1. So this is then the feasible um, region. And, um, and we know that x1 and x2 is positive. So we have, we know then the, this is then the, the feasible, uh, uh, sorry, visible region if the objective functions is this f equals to 2x1 plus x2 we can see that uh, uh, if you want to maximize it as we know it so we have to have uh, the biggest x1 and x2 possible so um, if we apply if we just apply uh, this a b c d e point yeah a b c d these are all in the vertices and then e is in the somewhere in between so we just 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 put some some arbitrary numbers over there so a is 0 0.0 0 0.0 0 comma 4 and then if you put x1 0 x2 4 put that into this equation so we get f equals to 4 and then if we use b if we use b and then we get f equals to 1 if c f equals to 2 and then d at this point uh, f equals to 41.7 and then if um, e which is this just another number uh, f equals to 4 so you can see that now here 
the same uh, logic so because the objective function is all positive so if we want to maximize it that means we have to have the the, the, the furthest points from the zero zero point then see that the maximum value of this objective function is 41.7 over 7 uh, corresponds to this point 16 over 7 and 9.7 and then the minimum value we can see it's uh, at point B uh, where f equals to 1 so we will then apply the simplex method to prove that it can have or it should have the um, the, the same numbers as what we have in this uh, graphical solutions over here so now we want to maximize these functions yeah uh, so f equals to x1 plus x2 so the constraints we put all the constraints together x1 plus x2 bigger than or equal to 1 x1 plus x2 bigger than or equal to 1 this one so we have to then multiply them all by minus 1 so we get this and then we put the select variables over here and then another constraint is 3x1 plus 4x2 less than or equal to 12 so it's already less than or equal to 12 so plus s2 and then the x1 minus x2 less than or equals to 1 so we have tss3 and then make a table so we have x1 x2 s1 s2 s3 and f as the objective functions and here we can have you could have like a constant for example and then row 1 is then the constraint 1 yeah row 1 is the constraint 1 so uh, you can see x1 in constraint 1 is minus 1 minus 1 x2 is minus 2, oh, sorry, minus 1, minus 1, and then s1 is plus 1, plus 1, and there is no s2, and there is no s3, 0, 0, and then there is no f, 0. Uh, and then row 2 corresponds to the uh, the second uh, constraint, so um, x1 is 3, x4 is 2, s1 is 0, s2 is 1, uh, s3 is 0, and then f is 0. And then the constants is then 12. Yeah, I forgot to mention that the constants for equation 1 is minus 1. You can see it's minus 1 and 12. And then R3 corresponds to the um, the third constraint, which is then the 1 for, my, for x1, minus 1 for x2, uh, 0 for s1 and s2, and then 1 for s3, and then f is 0, and then 1 for the constants, which is this. And the last row is then the uh, objective functions, which is this. So we have two minus. We so we put all of these two together. Put it on the left hand side, yeah, just like we do with the other uh, constraints. Put all the variables into left hand side. So we have x one minus two, x two minus one, and there is no s one, s two, s three, and then f equals to one. Yeah, f equals to 1 and then since uh, this right hand side of the equations has been uh, uh, vacated so we have uh, f equals to 0 and then we have constants equals to 0 so now we can see yeah, what is then the basic solutions basic solutions is then the the, um, the variables that only come in one uh, equation only so we see that x1 it appears in 1, 2, 3 in all the rows. X2 also appears in all rows. S1 appears in um, only in one equation. S2 is only one. S3 is only one. And F is also in one. So you can see. If you see it. So um, the basic solutions is um, S1 is minus 1. Which is not feasible. While S2 and S3, they are all positive, which is a feasible. And uh, you could also see that X1 and X2, which is then the, the non-basic solutions, they are, yeah, if they appear in all of the equations, we can consider them as equals to zero. Um, you can see that um, uh, if we go back here, so if X1 and X2 equals to zero, this is then the point. Yeah, and this shows that our initial conditions like this, uh, the we are uh, we are still uh, we are not in the feasible region. Well, we know that this is then the feasible region, and we are here now. 
at this point x1 and x2 equals to 0. So how do we then the move from here into that visible region? Um, this is then the, the use of point six, uh, step number 6 that we discussed before. So uh, we will find the most negative um, we have to move. By moving, by removing all the negatives on the right hand side, the right hand side equation. So we there's only one in this case, one uh, negative on the right hand side of the equation. So we have to uh, make this into positive. So how do we do this? Yeah. So um, step one, we know that this is going. We are going to uh, 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 remove or replace with positive numbers. And then we have um, from this row, we have like two negative numbers. So we can just pick any of them. So in this case, I just pick this one, minus one. So this is going to be our, uh, this is our pivot row. Yeah. And this is going to be our pivot column. And the intersection between them, which is this, is then our pivot uh, uh, point. Um, since I want to make that pivot point equals to uh, uh, to be a positive number and it has to be equals to 1, so I divide the whole row into minus 1. So R1, so this is going to be minus, divided by minus 1 makes 1, divided by minus 1 makes 1, divided by minus 1 makes, uh, will make minus 1. Uh, 0, 0, 0, and this, if we divide this by minus 1, becomes 1. So that's how we get this to be a, a positive number. Yeah, by by making the pivot point into a plus one number, um, and then we do the this goes Jordan elimination by the same um, approach. So um, we have this now one equals to one, and then we have to make everything here into zero. Yeah. So how to make four into zero? The only thing is this: uh, the the new row, the new R two equals to then the current R two. Minus 4R1. Yeah, remember that this R1 over here, this is already 1. Yeah, this is already 1. So uh, 4, minus, uh, yeah, 4 minus 4 times 1 is then equals to 0. Hence, we make this 0. And then 3 minus 4 times 1. This is already 1. Because we divide this with minus 1. So 3 minus 4 times 1 is then minus 1. So we do that. Um, we do this approach by uh, yeah, calculating the R, new R3 equals to R3 plus R1, R4 equals to R4 plus R1, yeah? because this is minus 1 minus 1, so minus 1 plus 1 equals to 1, equals to 0. The same goes with the row 4, so hence we get this. So 1, 0, 0, 0. So if we now look at this, x1 is then still z equals to 0, right? And x2 is, uh, it is now a basic solution. So x2 is then equals to 1 in this case. So x1 equals to 0, x2 equals to 1. So you can see 0, 1 is uh, here, point B, 0, 1. So we are now already at this point, which is already in the feasible region. Yeah. Now S1 equals to 0, because S1 is no longer a basic solution. S2 equals to um, 8. And then S3 equals to uh, 2. So uh, all positive. Now, since all positive, then we can just sim uh, continue with the standard simplex by removing all negatives in the objective function, which is in the row 4. So we have 1 and then 2. We have to remove um, all of them, but you can just pick which one that you are going to do uh, first. So in this case, um, I just do, um, let's have this first. So this is then the, the pivot column. And then which one is then the pivot row? So we have to find the ratio of the non-negative uh, between the constants and the, and the pivot column. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. Uh, this is not applicable because 8 divided by minus 1 is minus 8. And 2 divided by 2 is then also 1. And this is also not applicable. Yeah, um, this is simply not applicable. Uh, so uh, we have uh, this, they have the same value. So in this case, you can just pick an any, any arbitrary number. Um, so uh, I pick now um, this one, which is 2. So I pick this one, 
and then the, um, this becomes then the pivot point so let's make this into one by dividing the whole row by two right a three by two so we get this one and then we have to then change the other values of the the values of the other rows into zero by by doing this so uh, our, the new r1 is then r1 minus r3 because r3 is already one and then r2 is then r2 plus r3 minus one plus one makes it zero and then r4 is also the same uh, four minus one plus one equals to uh, zero so we have this so now we have x1 uh, still in the basic solution x2 sorry x1 now becomes the basic solution x2 still in the basic solutions so uh, we can see uh, x1 equals to um, 1 x2 equals to 0 and then we can see it was there in point b and then now it's uh, going back going to point c over here so 1 comma 0 yeah. Um, and then S1, S2, S1 is then 0, S3 is 0, S2 is, is 9. So they have all still positive on the left, on the, on the right, right, right hand side of the equations. And we still check if we are still having minus values in the last row or in the objective function, which we still have, which is this one, minus 3 half. So now we are going to make this uh, a positive number yeah so this then our going to be a, a, a pivot column so this is going to be our pivot column and then the so this my divided by that is uh, not counted this also divided by that my not counted so only the positive is this then the only one so nine divided by seven over two um so we want to make this equals to one and the rest uh, make it zero and zero and zero how do we do that is that this we divide it by by itself seven over two so we get the new r2 equals to one and then the r1 then the plus half of the r2 and r3 is also half r4 is then three half of the r r2 so we get this so we have still have like x1 is the basic solution, x2 is basic solutions, where they have x1 is 16 over 7, x2 9 over 7. So if we see, put it in the graph, we know that this is already in the D point. Yeah. So D point, and then s1 is 18.7, 18 over 7, sorry. S1 is 18 over 7, and then S2 and S3 are all zeros, so they are all positive. The, they are feasible as we know it we can see it now they are feasible and then the, um, we don't find any negative uh, values in the last row so that means we stop with the uh, iterations and then this f functions 41 over 7 is then our uh, the results or the solution for the objective functions which corresponds to the value to the points d over here yeah the x1 and x2 so this proves Right, this simplex we can come up with the same solution as in the graphical solutions that point d is then the maximum uh, objective function so how about if we now do the minimization of the same problem so we want to minimize this same function yeah we know what the uh, result will be which is then the point b so now uh, we minimize this so how do we do that if we put if we try to do that in simplex we have to transform this minimization into maximization. So how to do that is that uh, we put another variables y, y equals to minus f, which is then minus 2x1 minus x2. And we want to maximize this because if you maximize y, we are minimizing the f minus f. If we maximize y, we are minimizing, uh, mathematically speaking, we are minimizing the uh, minus f. Uh, it will go to the minus the more minus now we uh we have this equals to y and then we put them on the here so that makes the last row 2 x1 1 x2 0 0 0 and then 1 and then 0 as the right hand side of the equation 
and then R1 is still the same. So this um, minus 1, minus 1, 1. So minus 1, 12, 1. So all the same. And we know that this is not in the feasible region. So we have to uh, remove, we have to change this into a positive number by doing the same. Um, so um, this case, we want to make this equals to 1 and the others equals to 0. And then the, this is then the solution. So 1, 0, 0, 0. And then we can now see that um, all of this is then positive. Yeah, x1 equals to 0. x2 is 1. Right, in this case, x2 is uh, 1. x1 is 0 because these are non-basic solutions. s1 is 0, s2 is 8, and then s3 is 2. So these are all positive. Uh, right hand side of the equation is also positive and then there is no negative already in the uh, in the objective functions yeah uh, so then in this case we uh, the iteration is stopped so we know that um, x1 equals to 0 x2 equals to 1 that makes the objective functions uh, this has to be y then in this case so y equals to minus 1 which is then the minus f so f is then equals to 1 so we can see now x equals to 0, b, x2, x1 equals to 0, x2 equals to 1, this is already at the b point. At the p point, f equals to 1. So this confirms that this is then our minimum point obtained by the simplex, the same as um, the results that we obtained by the graphical method. So now, you can try on your own to solve the refinery problem. Yeah. So uh, we put them, we put all of these constraints into uh, uh, the matrix so we have all the coefficients uh, the uh, variables and then the um, the um, the the right right hand side of the equations um, non-basic is this x1 x2 equals to 0 and then basic x1 x3 24,000 x4 2,000 x5 is 6,000 so all of these are positive and we are in the feasible region and then you can just continue until you get this yeah you get this so maximum value is 286,765 x1 is this x2 is that one so um so we'll do the same in excel solver i think we can skip this one we'll uh you can you can do it on your own um now um Sensitivity analysis. So we know that all of these uh, parameters that we have, these uh, like um, um, we Im we use them as an input to the model. So uh, and we know that these coefficients are not one hundred percent certain, uh, and uh, some of these parameters are fluctuated. Uh, for example, the price are fluctuating, supplies of the uh, crude oils are fluctuating, and then demands also fluctuating. So. Uh, um, only finding the optimal solutions for one particular case in time does not mean that we can we are solving the a practical problem. So what we should do is then we we can then alter these parameters into uh, some range that we know, and then we can solve that again so that we can see we can have a picture or feeling on how uh, the solution uh, changes. Uh, correspond to the, uh, the 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 uncertainties in the parameters um, if we go back to our refinery so we can the, we can have that the final table over here gives us f equals to uh, minus 466x3 and then minus uh, 87.52x4 plus 286.765 yeah, and if we see it in a different perspective, at x equals to 3, x, equal, x 3 equals to 0, x 4 equals to 0, 0, and 0, we get 286765, which is then the maximum value of our objective function. And then the, um, we know that um, uh, this is a constraint for gasoline, yeah? constraint for uh, um, kerosene, and the gray one is a constraint for the uh, fuel oil. And then we have these equations from the final table. Um, 
at the optimum point, which is point 0.3, so both gasoline and kerosene are constrained. You know, it, this is then the intersection between the gasoline, the blue one, and the kerosene lines, but not the fuel oil. So in this case, you could say that whatever we do with the fuel oil, it doesn't change um, our objective functions. So um, if you go back to our constraint of the gasoline, so um, x1 and x2 is then the amount of crude 1 and crude 2. And then if you put x3 in it, so x3 equals to 0, the coefficient for x3 is 0 in the optimal solution. And then, but if we relax this production of gasoline, X3, by one unit, say for example, minus one. So if you put this minus one, and then it will make this uh, 24,001. And then, um, and then if we, if we put that into the equations over here, so minus one uh, times minus 4.66, we get 4.66 additional of the objective functions, you know, because 4.66 plus 2.86765. So this delta F, that the profit is about, uh, is what we call as the marginal price for constraint A, if we relax the gasoline by, uh, by minus one in this case. Or if we increase the constraint, it was maximum that we can produce is 24,000 barrels. But if we say that we can make it 24,001 barrels instead of 24,000, we can have an increase of profit by $4.66 per day. So similarly, we can do the same thing with kerosene with this marginal price, which is then the, 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 the constant over here. And then uh, we know that small changes in the fuel oil doesn't make any difference because fuel oils, as we know it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't do anything at this point. Uh, if the crude oil price changes, coefficients of the objective function will change as well. And then to, in the end, we have to do iterative calculations. Um, so degenerate problems are the problems that do not have feasible region, for example, um, um, so we have constant A and then constraint B. So constant A is moving in this direction, constraint B is moving in that direction, so while we know the x1 and x2 has to be positive. So there is no, there's no feasible region. Indeed, yeah? So um, now later on, if you use any solver, like uh, like uh, in, sol in, in, in Excel solver or in any other sol sol uh, solver, if you don't find any feasible region you know you know then this might be your case uh, an unbounded optimum doesn't have a, infin a finite solution so we can see that uh, the higher in this graph for example so x1 and then x2 so you can see if we want to um, uh, minimizing the minus x1 versus minus x2 that means we have to uh, uh, increase x1 and x2 as much as possible so in this case we don't have limit on x1 so it can go all the way until infinity so this is two typical uh, degenerate LP problems duality let's extend the duality if you if you see it uh, the marginal price of gasoline you know that it's 4.66 and then for kerosene it's 87.52 while the fuel oil has zero marginal price, we know that from the uh, previous, uh, from the last equations of the uh, the matrix, um, if we, if the maximum capacity of these products are multiplied by the marginal prices, we will find so 4.66 times 24,000. This by time, time this and that times that we make this, which is the same as the optimum profit calculated for this problem. So this is uh, uh, an important p feature of linear programming called like uh, called as a duality. Um, the original linear programming is then we call it a primal problem and then this duality we call it the dual problem. So the formulation is that if we uh, have a minimization problem like this one, f equals to this and then we want to minimize it and then we make them in this uh, uh, matrix calculations f equals to c transpose uh, times x vector x and then the coefficients a bigger than or equals to b so we make it in this manner so matrix a x bigger than or equals to b the dual problem would be we just transpose the uh, change this f 
uh, f still equals to f and then uh, c transpose we change it to b transpose yeah so um so in this case you can say that um so we a11 a21 we put it into a11 over here and then a21 we put it in this in this this direction so a21 so we really change the uh transpose the coefficients of a into a transpose and then multiplied by y and then less than or equals to c so this c coefficients in the objective functions we now put it in the into the as the right hand right hand side of the equations over here and then the, what was the right hand side of the equations of b in this case we put it into the the new objective functions and then the um, x we simply change x by by y so the optimal solutions of this dual problem is the same as that to the primal one so you can you can you can you can do it on your own um yeah and then we apply the sim same simplex method with that dual problem and then the maximum value of z of the objective functions will be the minimum value of w as we know it yeah so uh, the maximum of this will be minimum of of that and then the um, So the um, the the bottom row of the final simplex table is then the corresponds to the select variables as what we see in the x3 and x4 in this case. So these are then the uh, um, the select variables. Yeah. So an example, f equals to three x1 plus five x2, and then x1 plus three x2 bigger than or equals to ten. 2x1 minus x2 bigger than equals to 4 and so on and so forth so we change this into uh, change this yeah into that one so now f is equals to 10 y1 plus 4 y2 minus 2 y3 minus 20 y4 like in this equations over here and then the constraint is then the transpose of a so um, we have now one and then three so one uh, plus two y minus one minus one so one plus two y minus one minus one less than equals to one yeah so um, and then the so i think this is three it should be three this is three and then the three minus one minus a uh, plus four minus one equals to or less than five which is in this case five so solving this is the same as for solving the above uh, original problem i think which you can do at home so um with this uh, uh now you can also do this at home so um bottom line is that uh, standard linear programming problem is about maximization so if we have uh, and then the uh, inequality constraint has to be in uh, the inequality constraint has to be less than or equal to uh, the non-standard linear programming problem is anything that deviates from this uh, this these two um, situations uh, one way to do that is then just to convert this maximization into minimize uh, minimization into maximization by multiplying it into minus one and then the whole bigger than or equal to has to be multiplied by uh, has to be multiplied by minus one to make it less than or equal to to, to zero, or we change it into the um, the the dual problem, yeah, or we can just simply use uh, Microsoft Excel or any other linear programming software. So with this, I think I conclude my presentation.